Hello and welcome to the second episode of Kerbal Space Endeavor. We have here our first satellite nicely prepped up in a procedural fairing, which is a mod that I'm using. And we have our recently saved pilot, Barston Kerman, to complete this mission for us, hopefully successful. And here we have liftoff. Now with the changes in one of the last few updates, um, they changed the height that you can you need to get to to get into a geostationary orbit. So before it was 2,868.75 kilometers, and now it is only 2,863.3 kilometers. So it changed by a little. And here we got rid of the fairing. And you can see this nice satellite up, the, uh, satellite up there, which we're going to unfold a little bit later. Now, once again, we use the power of fast forwarding to get this done over as quickly as possible. And as the most interesting way that I can present this. So we'll just accelerate even further. And I came to the point where I realized I don't have enough fuel. So I open up the satellites, which have on the side, you see the blue sides right there. These are all uh, photovoltaics, the first ones that I had the ability to unlock. So the first satellite I have right here is a very, very low tech. It has four major dishes on it and it has four smaller dishes on it, which should give me enough coverage and this thing should stay alive for quite amount of time. And here I had to reload really quick because, as I said before, I realized I don't have enough fuel. So I actually had to use all of the fuel that was intended for the satellite to get into the right orbit to put it back into the main craft so we can get our good Mr. Barston back to Kerbin. That will mean that we will have to you do a refueling mission to get the... Oh, and we lost some parts there on re-entry, so yeah. I always seem to lose parts on re-entry, so yeah, it's nothing really new. Deadly re-entry is my worst enemy. And here we lost an engine, and we lost other pieces, and more pieces, and uh, yeah. We're just losing a hell of a lot of money. But at least we did not lose Barston Kerman. So I wanted to do a refueler mission until I realized that I am missing the fuel lines, or better say from Kerbal Attachment System, which I will need to refuel the strut endpoint which lets me refuel. So I looked into the contract system and found a mission which needs me to test these small gear bays on a suborbital trajectory and I have to test the decoupler, the, uh, the big one, the Rockomax decoupler, and the skipper engine at the very back. And after a successful mission, we landed the craft, collected the science, and then we had enough to unlock the next node so we can finally go into the planning of the refueling mission. So yeah, that's what we look, pipe endpoint, that's what it was. So we have a little bit of science left and all of the tech tree we have here is at 90 points. So after we set up the satellites, we then have to look into getting more and more science. Now this is the Refueler 1 mission and we'll just get this up and on board. We have Denvin Kerman leading this mission. So we get as close as we can without any RCS to the satellite, the Mark 1 SATCOM. And now we just need to, oh, oh, no, 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 just breaking right there, got the satellite spinning, which is never a good thing. And here we use Dunvin's RCS to slow down the rotation because rotating crafts can be a bit of a hassle when you try to connect them. And then I was unable to connect this because it was out of the right alignment. So we hop back in, turn it around, and then we'll try to link this again. 
once again, for people who don't know, this is Kerbal Attachment System, which allows me to connect uh, things and build things in space, which makes it a really good mod. But as you can see here, it's a little bit buggy because both of the craft had SAS install uh, activated, not installed, at the same time. And when you connect pieces with Kerbal Attachment System, it pretty much thinks that it is only one craft. So you have to think that the center of mass is in a very, very weird place right now so um, you have to be really careful with that stuff when you attach things next to each other so always turn off SAS and of course RCS and here we just went back up and retrieved the connector for the pipes and now it was just time to head back and as you can see here once again I promised I frack things up and I did frack things up as I lost parts of the craft returning to Kerbin. However the most important part the pilot is still alive and safe. So here we go and switch back to the satellite after the first refueling mission. We have 90 units of fuel and we're accelerating. We need to get up apps and periaps to 2863.3 kilometers so that we will have uh, an orbital period of 5 hours 59 minutes and 9.4 seconds so it is not uh, a complete 6 hours orbit that we need because as I said before, they changed it in a recent update that uh, Kerbin Day is actually a little less than six hours. Like in real life, our Earth uh, doesn't have a 24-hour day, uh, a 24-hour day rotation. It has 23 hours, and I like I think like. 58 minutes and some seconds. I'm not sure. That's why we have every four years an additional day on the 29th of March. But if you want to look into more of this stuff that you probably all know more about than me, there is a lot to read up. And now we didn't get up into the right height um, with our first refueling mission. So this here is the second refueling mission. This time we altered the craft a little bit. We do have RCS installed and we added a little bit more fuel to get us even further and higher and get us as close as possible to SATCOM 1. And this is just normal maneuvering, trying to match up the nodes, and ah, and we can see here there's a strut end that likes to float in space. The game is not perfect, it is not done, but it is a hell of a lot of fun. I really do enjoy it. And uh, oh yeah, uh, I forgot when I reinstalled the game that my RCS settings are not the ones that I'm used to. So here you have me trying to figure out where the buttons are. So normal translation with RCS is somewhere like the J, K, L, and I key. But I don't really know. I don't look to it. it. I most of the times I change um, I change these to put them on the numpad. It just gives me a better feel of where I'm thrusting and where I'm going. So we get it close and we get it into position. Now this time it is the good man's Jebediah's turn to put here the connector and we're gonna link it and we're gonna link it right here and our parts are connected. This time I was smart enough to deactivate SAS. We still do have a little bit of spin in it but that doesn't really matter. So now it's just a matter of transferring in all the fuel and then finally after it should only have been one mission so after three missions now actually four if we count in the mission that was in between needed to get the refueling nodes in the science tech tree we finally made it and should have gotten enough fuel into this craft to get it into the right orbit so let's just We'll get this yeah, right there, attach it, and hop back on board. 
slowly and carefully because we never want to bump around things because we can damage stuff. There we go. And we activate the engine right there. And because the curb and space center is behind us at the moment, we need to slow down. So the way to slow down is to go into a higher orbit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a higher orbit so I get a higher apoapse. And once I reach apoapse, I'm going to decrease, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to increase my periapse to um, pretty much fly slower than the planet is rotating. And once the Kerbal Space Center is completely underneath me, then I will get to the right um, height that I need to be at, and therefore I will reach a geostationary orbit. And um, yeah, so now we s just, after we did that maneuver to get higher over Kerbin, we switch back to our good man Jebediah and watch him as he slowly tries to return back home safe and sound. Okay, there we go. We should get into the atmosphere and slow ourselves down and turn around because we don't want to lose all of our parachutes like I do in almost all of my other re-entries. Normally what you should do is you should use the heat shields to protect all of the uh, craft's stuff that you have on them of the re-entry effects. The problem with that is if I want to save as much money as I can, I want to save as much parts of the craft that I can. So what I'm using is actually, since the engines are made to withstand a lot of heat, I'll try to go back into Kerbin's atmosphere just with the with the engine. And most of the time it works, but sometimes I become lazy, I fast forward, and then this happens. So now we're plunging face first into the atmosphere and I'm trying to bleed off as much speed as I can by twisting and turning and everything and I lost a parachute and the other ones are starting to heat up as well and I was really stressed and there goes the second one so we only have one parachute left for this craft and our most important person is on board it is Jebediah and let's hope we can get Jebediah down safely. He may not die, he shall not die. Keep in mind, I have Tech Life Support installed and I deactivated Respawn, so if he dies, he's dead. He's never coming back. But at least we got rid of the reheating effects. Here I'm just using Real Shoot, which is another mod by Stupid Chris, to, that's his name, uh, to change the altitude at which the parachute op should open. Because with three parachutes, if they open at 500 meters, that's fine. But if I only have one chute, I should probably increase the height at which the parachute opens. And for any viewer who's out there who has the same issue as I do, where you have this flickering of the UI and you get a seizure just like me, um, there is a fix for this pretty easily. You just quick save and then quick uh, quick load that should technically get rid of the problem and here you see me as I open the parachute and we actually make it semi down there we go we only lost part of the craft again <laughs> okay so here's the maneuver that I said I was going to do earlier but now we switch to it now we need to time accelerate until we hit apoapse a little bit more, a little bit more. There we go. Just don't overshoot because I always overshoot when it comes to time acceleration. I do have the uh, Kerbal Alarm Clock installed, which is another mod, like so many mods that I'm using. Um, which allows me to put on a timer that stops the time word precisely at the point that I want it to, which is very helpful when you set up maneuver nodes or you want to set up certain times for launch windows or other things which actually it does calculate your launch windows for you which is very very convenient 
So yeah, just accelerating a little bit more so we get our periaps to 2863 kilometers. Just a little bit more, a little bit more. As you can see in the back, I'll, because we're already talking about mods, I am using the visual enhancement mod with the better atmosphere mo mod. However, I'm only using from the better atmosphere mod, which includes a whole lot of other things like custom asteroids, asteroid belt for jewel, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I only chose the clouds and uh, the cities for Kerbin and like the visual enhancement for like the moon as you can see right there in the corner it's probably in your standard game it looks um, let's just say it doesn't look as cool um, yeah so here we are right underneath of the Kerbin Space Center or almost underneath of it it's not a hundred percent but it doesn't need to be a hundred percent as long as I have the right orbit time so as I said, here we're getting down our apoaps, which was higher before, so we caught up to the Kerbal Space Center, or actually the Kerbal Space Center caught up to us. And now we need to reach 5 hours, 59 minutes, and 9.4 seconds. So if it's off by like a millisecond or a second, it shouldn't matter too much, but if the year years pass by, as ITAM accelerate and more missions are going on, so the time progresses, what will happen is that more and more the the s satellites will become not unstable, but they will get out of their position as I intended them to be. So I will have to fix that, or I have to launch new satellites, or we'll have to see about that. However, this was the satellite episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it and there will be a lot more to come. I'm more than enthusiastic to continue this series. I hope you guys enjoy watching it. So yeah, in the next mission we'll launch the other two main satellites and then there will be a special fourth one I will hope you guys look forward to. So until then, stay tuned, until next time. <laughs>